Welcome to Under the Fig Tree Podcast. In today's episode, hosts Rev. Micah Glenn and Rev. Dr. Ben Hout talk theology and life as they meditate under the fig tree. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Under the Fig Tree Podcast. Uh, ben, how are you this morning? I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, well, you know, well, multiple things going on. I, so, obviously... I'm on the couch, which now you should understand there's no guests. Don't click off. Don't stop right, listening. Right. Uh, but the weather is being St. Louis. Yeah. It, I was thinking about it as I was walking in this morning that um, it's beautiful. Yes. Concordia Seminary's campus during the spring, as flowers are blooming, as trees are blossoming, it is gorgeous yeah. outside. And then we need um, something to remind us that we're still fallen and that we're still sinners and that we're we're not saved by the beauty of concordia seminary alone Um, yeah we so um, my allergies are in full bloom as well and uh, they remind me that i'm a sinner that my body is broken and that i need a savior amen to all maybe i'm just over theologizing my my (laughs) allergies but Uh, yeah well and it you know, it was cold and it's warm and it's cold and it's warm. And today's not cold or warm, but yeah. it's windy, kind of overcast, but not really. It's just one of those awkward days. But like, I, I, I get allergies all year round. I don't even know what winter allergies are. Yeah. But if they exist, I have them. Yep. But it's too. this time now, uh, things begin to bloom, but it's the dogwood trees. Oh. Those ones really get me. Mm. First, I don't understand the way they smell. Why do they smell like that? <laughs> Uh, but the pollen that drops off of them, well, I guess yeah. the, that heavy pollen is probably like oak pollen, right? Yeah, there's, there's, um, when, when dogwoods bloom is a particular season it, and it signifies tree allergies. So it's probably not the dogwoods that you're allergic to, um, but tree pollen in general. So oak, maple, my, my son Noah is super allergic to tree pollen. Well, that's life. Yeah. Well, we're recording today, just the yeah. two of us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, we sat down <laughs> in these same places, uh, and we had a conversation. And it it was, was such an amazing it, conversation. It, it, it was. It, you'll just have to believe us because there's no <laughs> real evidence. I guess there is some evidence, but uh, you you see, we we're not l- like bottom of the barrel produced like we were when we first began. Our production has increased oh, yeah. significantly, but there's a a button that I push. And uh, we, we got to write for the pick and or leave it on the tree. And you asked me, and I didn't even look at the recorder. It was just like that delayed something yeah, you, didn't happen. <laughs> I was, I think I was in the middle of a write for the pick and, and I heard you go, <gasps> and I thought, wow, he's really having like a visceral reaction to my write for the yeah, pick and. This is yeah. like a serious thing. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And then I looked down and I was like, oh. So now, so now we have this awesome uh, sign that reminds us um, that our our producer Dale Ward uh, gave us, which is uh, are boys, yeah. <laughs> are we recording? Uh, which is really helpful, and, and I'm grateful to Dale and all that he does for us and puts up with us. Yeah, well, and I, I pressed the button well before we were ready to record. I know it's recording. Oh yeah, but I can't. At one Keep point, looking. we're gonna we're gonna use those, that B roll, and um, we'll, we 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 do have some bloopers and some um, mm-hmm. right allergies. right before yeah right before we got on me sniffling and sneezing and uh, all kinds of stuff. the 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 viewers probably don't want to see that, but maybe they do. Maybe they do. Well, uh, we just wanted to take some time, you know, as we continue to grow i think as podcasters is uh what this is about um it's not that we didn't the schedule's broken apart and we didn't have ideas for a guest but every once in a while i think it's good to just stop yep. give a couple of updates uh, updates uh remind everyone the purpose of the podcast uh things that are going on um and to share some updates yeah, yeah. And, and and before we get to the updates about uh what we really want to talk about today, what I also want to highlight is that, um, you know, every once in a while we take time, we do a series. I think the first one yep. we did was maybe on a, a, maybe it was a Titus, a pastoral epistle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we did... Um, that's, a, a, that's you got to go, if our YouTube uh, <laughs> viewers are uh, saying, oh. where are those episodes on YouTube? They don't exist because 
we recorded uh, the Under the Fig Tree podcast was was born as a audio only yeah. podcast for our first two seasons, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could have shared the video of it before because we, I mean, it was we started in the pandemic, so yeah, yep. this was still where we were kind of in your self bubble Ooh. stage of life. Those might those might have all gotten deleted. Yeah, we got that. I saw that. I saw that, but I was like, well, they're all the audio, the important part lives somewhere else. But um then we did parables. And so uh we're we're thinking about maybe doing a series on the book of Concord. Yeah. Um it won't be like we we're not gonna like spend time going through every aspect of the book of Concord. There I mean we'd do it we'd be on it could be years. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, but we'll probably like highlight certain aspects. Excuse me. The different documents and have a guest come and join us. So if you have ever had any questions about the book Concord, oh, excuse me, Dale, edit that out or leave it in. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, put in the comment. And then, of course, as we go on, you're reading, uh, you're listening, reading along the book of Concord and more questions come up. Yeah, some of yep. those. I, we'll have not just me and Ben, people who can actually answer your questions. Come on. Our, <laughs> students, <laughs> our students did this last year. A, a group of students um, just of their own accord because they – uh, love the confessions, see them as, as helpful for uh, articulating the faith and describing uh, the, the faith that the scriptures set forth. They put together a, a student reading group. Right. They invited a professor each week to come in and just talk a little bit. They even invited me. Look at that. Um, so they didn't care who they got. Um, it wasn't all just Kolb and Aaron and Herman, you know, <laughs> right. um, or Okamoto or the systematicians. So... Um, yeah, our sis, our students uh, put together something like that, and I think we could. Um, they had a whole reading schedule and all that kind of stuff. That might be interesting to get from uh, Ian Heinze and and to yeah, share. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, there you go. Well, that's the future of uh, a series coming up. That we again we 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 like the current format, but yeah, we want to provide additional yeah. theological content. We're theologians at least in theory and uh and we want our viewers yeah. <laughs> and listeners to stick with us and not go oh my gosh another episode yeah exactly yeah. well and then a couple special guests lined up we won't spill the beans on all of those other than faculty members uh and we, we if there's somebody else outside from the church that uh you'd like we, to have on under the fig tree but also you'd like to hear their story of how they got into ministry yeah tell them about the podcast and say hey you yeah. should ask these guys to be on not that they need to like get our permission but say hey like Somebody said I should be on your podcast and come join us. But just saying we have a special guest that is not on the faculty. That's true. I'm looking forward to that. I, I, so. I was going to say maybe someday. That's all. That's all I have to say about that. Speaking about that, uh, <laughs> recruiting, right? He would make a great pastor. Uh, and that's, that, I mean, that's ultimately the purpose of Under the Fig Tree, the, the overarching purpose, yeah. right? Uh, I, again, it's, it's been just over three years since I was called to the seminary to be the director of recruitment. Uh, we've been reflecting on our life together as brothers in Christ and our work together in the enrollment department for the last three years. And I remember when I first started, uh, we had this long checklist of things that we wanted to accomplish. Yeah. Um, and then for personal reasons, I started doing I mean, Three years is a good time to check in and yep. see how you're doing, how you're growing. And I started going through that checklist. And uh, A, I think there are very few things on the checklist unchecked i can't hmm. even really think of things that we haven't at least started not yeah. com to completion i mean this is a long-term project recruiting i'd like to see that checklist right. i don't even remember it well, but my wife always reminds me that my memory is terrible so so there I, yeah i'd have to <laughs> compile so there are certain checklists parts of the checklist that i didn't i knew we had started and completed but yeah i'll, yeah. Yeah, I'll share it. yeah it's yeah. we yeah. have done a lot of stuff and uh been very active and yeah. it's producing results yeah and so this is um we're i mean our job is to focus we we have other programs we have distance programs s p e i t c h s they're all wonderful programs and they're not yeah. second class we do, it's not that we don't think about them but they usually uh the candidates arise out of context and need yeah uh like immediate need to where they are same thing with the deaconess program um we focus on that program. Our deaconess program isn't as old, or I don't want to say as established, but just as old in time as other deaconess programs. We started an online program, which is growing. So if you're 
in a space and you think you have these gifts for, to be a deaconess, but you can't move to the seminary. There's an online program for you. Even my mom was just saying uh, oh, yeah. that she's thinking about doing the ODS hmm. program. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of cool. caught me off guard. Not yeah. completely, but I was like, all right, man, let me know when you're ready. Um, but I, That we, way your, your father and your father-in-law are pastors and your mother and your mother-in-law can both be deaconesses. Exactly. <laughs> is, life is life. Uh, but but we, we focus mainly on our traditional, most traditional route, the Master Divinity. Yeah. Uh, it is the most common route to ordination that we have in the church. It's still the route to ordination that uh, we give the most attention to because it gives the most general pastoral education yeah. and gives guys uh, a tool set to go to a lot of different contexts. It's not to say that guys in the s &P program, including Dale, our producer, aren't talented preachers and teachers and gifted pastors, but again, the S and P route is from context and need, and the Master Divinity is for a larger need, not for a specific place, but for any place. For the broader church, and that's why uh, we we focus on that because as we look at vacancies, as we as we look at uh, the growth of the church, the growth of the population in America, and we think about need, the need for more pastors, uh, the more preachers of the gospel that we need. Um, that's going to be the program ultimately uh, that we continue to highlight and focus and, and push towards. And so, last year fall of 2022 now which is weird that the fall of 2022 is now last year right um yeah we had a lot of different factors to where we had a, a small incoming class yeah 34 yeah um which M -div. M master divinity yeah across yeah, all of our programs is different yep. yeah uh but 34 m div guys and that's that i mean that is a challenge for us as an institution yep um i mean we exist to train guys to be pastors namely and if guys aren't coming to the mdiv program it's not that we lose all of our identity and purpose for the seminary but we're we're a seminary that is well, the main function of our institution and i think i've i've heard that kind of round number speaking um this is very roughly speaking that um the the church body needs about 200 pastors a year to uh stay even with the number of pastors that are retiring. And so if we're putting up 34, and I think Fort Wayne had 50 uh, or so. We're not even halfway. We're not even halfway. <laughs> and, uh, um, and and by the way, that that's, I think the first, last year was, I, I think the first year that Fort Wayne beat us, um, if we're talking in kind of competitive terms, sure. uh, beat us in, in how many MDiv, uh, students they had came coming in mm -hmm. they they beat us once in basketball too um but um over the last couple of years uh, st louis has proved that uh we can we can hang in there and uh so i i think uh enrollment we will have uh the same thing so so a little friendly uh competition with yeah. our good friend matt matt wheatfelt um and uh our our friends at fort wayne uh, which we we have this friendly camaraderie and yet um it's one church body one lord jesus christ yeah. one synod and um we 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 serve all together so yeah. um at the end of the day the question is how many pastors does the entire church body need right now or at least this last year we didn't we didn't bring in enough no uh one is you know this is why do-overs are good because we didn't talk about Fort Wayne at all yeah. last year. But but you're right. Our counterpart uh, in Fort Wayne, Matt Weefelt, uh, we have a great relationship with. Um, he's a, an amazing guy. Yeah. Uh, fellow alum of Concordia, Chicago. Oh, I, I was going to say. He didn't yeah, no, he went to Concordia, season. Chicago. Uh, <laughs> but but we have, a, we have a lot of conversations. We interact with Matt Weefelt a lot. Uh, I see him a lot in travel as I go around to different places. He he comes to Black Clergy Caucus meetings and things like that. And he's like my second or third cousin. There we go. Uh, no, he, he's a great guy. And I remember when I accepted this role and uh, me and Matt got to know each other better. Well, I mean, it's I, there's no secret that the two seminaries at different moments of time have been very collegial, but also had animosity towards each other for yep. different reasons. And I think right now, at least from an enrollment perspective, um, we have a, a very collegial relationship. We share booth space with, at the Yeah, the Cold convention. War is over. The yeah. Cold War is over. And <laughs> National Youth Gathering. Because it was like one of these conversations, because we were talking about this number. What number do we need to produce as seminaries? Yeah. And, and we're think, working together with 
with them where we, we have a grant from Lily yeah. that uh, is a, a big chunk of money, and a lot of it is directed toward enrollment stuff. And you think about 200 guys, that's the need, that they need us as seminaries to bring in. And I, I, if, if there used to be classes of 200 guys at this seminary, I've never known it. Uh, and it's been at least a couple of generations since if that has been the case. And so w both seminaries, 100, that's what I told me. I was like, okay, if we need 200, it'd be great if we had 100 and you had 100. Because yeah. at first it was like, well, if you guys had like 125 and we had 75, I'm like, no, it's like, let's, let's 100, 100. Yeah. Because uh, when I we were working probably together, like 10 or 15 years ago when St. Louis and Fort Wayne were both, well, especially when St. Louis was kind of in its, its uh, biggest classes over the last 20 years, um, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, we might have put out jointly between the two seminaries 200, but it's probably been 15 years or more since we've done that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's been, yeah, I think it's been a while because this is the crazy thing. Like 10 years ago, I was, I was a seminarian. Anyway. You're, you are getting so <laughs> old. Listen. I mean, look at that gray and that beard. <laughs> And don't you think, <laughs> listeners? If you think Micah is getting old, just just drop some comments yeah. in the uh, the YouTube. He loves hearing about that kind of stuff. I'm um, it, it fills him with uh, joy because yeah. he's just confident in who he is, and age just doesn't matter to him. <laughs> All right. At some point in the near future, not super near, I, I will be forty. So if that is upset you because I'm talking about being old and I'm not yet forty, well, you know, at some point I'll be older, but. Uh, yeah, not quite. Um, I was gonna say something that Dorothy said to me this morning, but it it did it did. Some of those me. things are best left unsaid. <laughs> she was talking about me being old yeah. enough to be. Uh, she was like, they they have an intern at the place where she works, and she was like, he was born after you graduated high school. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that still wasn't that long ago. <laughs> now we we gave the update of our incoming class last year, thirty four, which all yep. thirty four of those guys. And again, we're just talking about Master Divinity students, incredible students. Yeah. Uh, it's a great group. A wonderful class. Uh, the faculty have actually commented on this. They, they, um, you know, we we actually get together a couple times a year and we talk about uh, each class of, of guys, um, and and not not in a uh, any kind of pejorative way or to bring them down. It's it's truly um, about their formation. But we have to talk about them as kind of whole persons. And yeah, guys, um, yeah. the faculty have have talked about how. Uh, how strong this fall 2022 class is. So um, that that's a, a good thing. And it's it's not like, oh, yeah, this year is the best class that we've ever had. Sure. That kind of uh, silly stuff. But uh, the most dramatic rose ceremony yet. Uh. But every year we, we pray for the incoming class. And those 34, whether we thought it was enough or whatever, those are the 34 that God provided mm -hmm. the seminary for mm -hmm. the fall of 2022. Um, but, uh, so that, that's kind of part of the thing. We, we have a, a fairly, well, now we're, I don't know if we would call ourselves a new team, I guess, in the grand scheme of the seminary. Yeah. We're still a new team, but now we've been together for over a year. We've been working, we've been, uh, changing our practices. We've been trying to get technology to help us and we've been, uh, sharpening up our goals and how we want to achieve them, setting different goals, uh, it, it, and I'll let you give your lag and lead measure speech again. We, you did it yesterday, and I don't know. It, like, when I give a, a good speech, and I give it off the cuff, and I've done it, and I have to do it again, it just never feels the same. But, Ben, I'm pumping you up. I'm bigging you up. It was a good speech. We, we, what are lag and lead measures? Because now I've thrown these two words on people, and somebody might know, but maybe they don't. I think that's good, and I'm going to get there. But first, there I'm going to start by backing up just a little bit. Right. So, um we, we did have this incoming class of 34, and um, this past fall, after they, they got started, and we knew, um, yep, 34 is the number that, that uh, started in the fall semester, um, I wrote this email to our church body. Yeah. Uh, it went out to 37,000 unique email addresses, uh, our communications department tells me, and um, it was, it was a little humbling. It was one of the more humbling things that I've had to do in my career. Um, but I, I wrote to our church body, to supporters of the seminary, to our alumni, to our donors, uh, to uh, prospective students, and um, anybody else that 
uh, a lot of leaders in our church body that, yes, we had 34 coming in. It was a small class. It was not the, the uh, size of the class that we want to have going forward. And we, we asked people to join us in prayer. Mm-hmm. We, we said, um, we, we need, the church needs more pastors than what a class of 34 can provide. So we, um, we actually, with, with a little bit of fear and trepidation, we put out, uh, wouldn't it be an awesome goal if we could get back to 55 uh, incoming students? And where we got that was uh, two years ago yeah. in, in fall of uh, 2021, um, we, we had 55 as our incoming class. So we said, hey, let's go from 34 back to, to 55 and, and kind of start to dig out of this. If you're thinking of uh, we're kind of in a, a pit of sorts or if the, the numbers, if you're watching the graph, I, I make a lot of graphs and charts for uh, our leaders, uh, the Board of Regents and our, our church body, our district presidents and such. And so um, the the uh, graph kind of went down. So let's dig back up out of it. Let's, let's get it back to 55. And so we set that as our goal. And we, we asked the church, join us in prayer and send us as many names as you possibly can. And um, we, uh, so we set that as a goal, 55. Now, as Christians, we know that, um, well, it's this whole thing that we're praying for, right? Um, Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send workers into the harvest fields. Right. And so um, the, the 55 really is quite simply just a prayer to God. Would you, be, would you be willing to give us not 34, but 55 in this upcoming year? Um, so, the, so the question is, is that, is that okay to do as Christians? Um, and, and this is and and how does kind of our efforts in the enrollment team of actually doing stuff toward that goal of 55 how do they relate sometimes uh, Christians sometimes theologians have said um, there's no relation between what we want to happen prayerfully by uh, God's work of the Holy Spirit working through the word and our own human activity uh, and I I think that that's, it's, it's kind of muddying the waters. Um, we would say for sure that everything that God gives us is a gift, right. and we, we, uh, we are grateful for the 34 that God sent. Um, but there's this, there's this uh, terminology of lag and lead goals that kind of helps to make a little sense of this. Um, it comes from the business world, but I think the distinction might be helpful uh, to, to explain a little bit of uh, theology of setting a goal for how many students might come. So the lag goal, uh, 55 students, a lag goal is the result of effort and prayer and a lot of things that are frankly out of your control. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there are. Uh, the, the lag goal of 55 students coming in uh, at the end of the day is only and solely uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. But as Lutherans, we actually don't believe that, um, that there's, there's no way to understand how the Holy Spirit works. We believe that the Holy Spirit works through means, mm-hmm. and those means, as goofy and... Um, not, not you, goofy. I mean, look at you. You got your, your, your mint green T-shirt on. Um, you're looking good today. Nice but... Issues. but you know, some, some goofy people in the enrollment team um, that God would even use people like us right. to accomplish that goal of 55 students. What, what's, a, what's that about? Well, that's where lead goals come in. Lead goals are really the things that God has commanded us to do. Uh, so God has commanded us to not only pray, uh, but in Titus 1 verse 5, Paul says to Titus, um, stay in Crete and appoint elders or pastors uh, for that area. So Paul gives Titus some activity to do. He needs to go out. He needs to find people. He needs to connect them to local congregations. Uh, that's what we do 
here at the seminary. The speech is going on a lot longer than it did. It's all right, though. Yeah, do it. Yeah. So, so, uh, so lead goals are the thing. They're the activities that we do as an enrollment team to get after this. So Jesse Keeker, his goal is, I'm going to have a 90 minute lengthy dialogue mm-hmm. with as many people as I possibly can. Uh, so I think he had like 300 some, uh, maybe like 400 yeah. lengthy dialogues, average 90 minutes. Um, we found out that Jesse doing that was really helpful. For and sure. the Holy Spirit was really pleased to use <laughs> those 90-minute dialogues. And uh, we, we have uh, just received, last night, uh, we got 102. Was it 102. 102 or 103? Oh, maybe it's 103. I can't keep up because the, the applications just keep on rolling in. Um, it's 102, you're right. Yep. So, so 102, last year... Uh, for our, our incoming class of, of 34, we had 54 applications. Yeah. Um, my goodness, we, we've almost doubled the amount of applications. That didn't happen by just magic. No. It didn't happen by just um, poof. Uh, the Holy Spirit was pleased to use the means of Jesse Keeker getting on the phone and slogging it out. Um, he used the means of congregations and pastors and lay people parents and grandparents sending in names. Um, and so all this stuff, lag goals, lead goals, lead goals are the things that humans can, can control, can do. We set those and we hope that they lead toward a result. And then we leave it into the Holy Spirit's hands. Yep. And when it's, you know, that is 102 applications. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where like some people they hear them like, oh, you guys got a class of 102. It's like, no. Um, it's, I don't know if there's ever an institution where all of their applications turn into students enrolling and, and showing up. Uh, yeah, but, but again, it's usually about 66% for us. 66% yep. of those that apply end up enrolling. Enrolling. But, but yeah, that's the, it, it is significant things. You, it's one of those things where we talk about things that we can't control, how many people enroll, which is totally true, but we can. En- uh, control our activity, yeah, uh, and we can also control the things that we focus on and things that have happened in the past, and that's something I think uh, our team is really uh, not only looking at the past, but now we're also really intent on tracking our own activity, yeah, um, thinking about it, saying, "Hey, is is this beneficial? Do I need to shift?" And not waiting for too long as we look at a thing like, "Okay, like." Not that I try something for the first time. It doesn't do exactly what I want and say I don't want to do that, but say, like, I did a thing, didn't quite ha- go the way we wanted. This has happened multiple times as we continue to try, try new things. It's like, well, we don't need to throw the whole thing away because this was good about it. Yeah. Maybe we could have tweaked this a little bit and let's try it this way again. Last time, so, I mean, for instance, like I travel around uh, to high schools. People ask about recruiting. And so that's one of the big focuses, not to say that we've never visited high schools and middle schools and things, but it's what I, I focus on a lot. Just yesterday, yeah. one of our S&P students was taking his son, who's a junior in high school, to Concordia, Nebraska, emailed me and said, hey, we're coming back through St. Louis. Can we stop and talk? And yeah, it's of course. Uh, and so never miss those opportunities. I have a couple of elementary schools coming in the near future for nice. third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth yep. graders yep. coming, which is incredible. Come see the seminary. Come see what we're about. You never know what seed is going to get planted. But my point is, that's that's even high school, to some extent, is, is a while away. Yeah. If I'm talking to a freshman in high school, bare minimum, it's about eight years from potentially coming to the seminary. Yeah. And that that's a long investment and it's a long relationship. And sometimes that gets hard to see the result of. And so you begin to question. Um, but but a, a good friend and now a student, Sarah Crowder, yep. um, who you went to college with. Right. Uh, she's a teacher at Faith Lutheran in Las Vegas, lar- largest Lutheran High School in the country associated with the LCMS, which blows my mind. Um, and I, I asked a lot of questions about it. How did it grow and all these other things? That's not the point. But the point is, is that in a lot of Lutheran high schools and now and even in elementary schools, many of the students are no longer Lutheran. Yeah. And for a school like uh, Faith in Las Vegas, it's a faith based school. They learn about Jesus. But for most, the vast majority of their students going to faith is the first time they've read or picked up a Bible. 
And I think that's a beautiful thing. Long story short, I've been visiting there. And I think historically, you think of a school like Faith, and it's like, well, there are no Lutheran students there. There aren't many Christian students there. Why are we going to recruit there? Um, but one of their students is coming to Vocatio. And we have one one of their students that um, wasn't wasn't a wasn't a Christian when he started at Faith, oh. and he's on Vicarage right now, and he's rocking it. He is uh, yeah, Sam. I he, love Sam. He is uh, an awesome guy. Yeah, shout he, out to Sam. He, I I uh, I had him in uh, pre- reading and preaching the Word, and uh, he just has this beautiful faith. He uh, he always uh, is full of joy and greets people with uh, uh, faith filled <laughs> expressions and. Uh, yeah, he's going to make a fantastic pastor, and he knows how to reach people who didn't necessarily grow up Lutheran. 100%. And man, do we need more uh, of more of those evangelists? Speaking of, yeah, I asked Sam before I went to visit the first time. I said, "Hey, Sam, like uh, you went to faith. What are some things I should think about?" And he's just like, first, I th- he like from him having that transformation. He's like, "It's incredible that you're doing that." And he did give me some great pointers. And it, and because you can't go to a class, and I can't have. I mean, I guess I could have a deep theological conversation on our doctrine of the call to those students. Yeah. Uh, but instead, I always ask this very general question when I go to high school, because getting high schoolers to ask you questions and engage with you, especially when you're not as cool as you used to be, can be really challenging. Uh, it's so not I was, true, Mike. I always, I always start with you're the same question. Cool. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> what, do you, uh, what, what, what do you think a pastor does? And especially for some of them, because I think Sarah, even for the non-Christians, makes them go and see a church service as part of her class. Yep. And so they, they have some idea. They've at least seen it once, right? And so then we get to have these conversations. And since I have had a fairly um, non-traditional career path uh, as a pastor to begin with, where domestic missionary to Lutheran or to seminary, to pastor of a congregation, I did it in reverse order for, for right. a lot of people anyway. Um, to to be able to a now it's to be able to talk about congregational ministry and what it's like, but also to be to say well, and that's that. But we actually need pastors for a variety of things, yeah. for a variety of contexts, and we're have, gonna have to begin to begin to begin to begin <laughs> to think about different ways that we establish ministries and congregations to reach people. And so it's like if you're a next level thinker, you could have a a wonderful and beautiful career as a pastor, deaconess, teacher, or something else like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, we just, we need them. So we're doing that. If you're listening, Boccaccio, uh, June 24th to July 1st, still free this year, uh, something we changed, um, and we're still able to do it. And so, uh, but but the program is growing. We have a, we have a lag goal for that. I don't want to say that number, um, but I do at 75. Okay. Uh, ben, Ben is the one, uh, cause I got a report on that lag goal. And, uh, but my point is, is that, um, every year Boccaccio has grown since I've been the yeah, director of recruitment really because has. we, we said, well, we want to grow it. What are the things that we need to do? And we started doing those things like this was good. This was not so great. Let's continue to, but the point is, is that, um, so my first year we had we had 19 students and we always set these outlandish goals for ourselves and it's like well let's set a, a goal that's out of the, the question and try to reach it so i said 40 let's yeah, and i think double. the year before you got 19 we had maybe 12 or so something so. like that yeah so i said 40 um and it was one of these things we had 43 registered i yeah. want to throw that out yeah. there but we didn't have uh, our registration processes were different some emails went to junk. So people were like, well, we intended to come. We were waiting for the email back. I found it now, but we made other plans. Long story short, we ended up with, I think, 33 come, yep. which was still growth. And if communication hadn't broken down, we would have made that goal of 40. So then we, yeah. you, our new associate provost, Ron, said, what is the what is the capacity for vocatio to stay what it is? Because it's not a summer camp. It, um, not every student that comes is coming thinking, I'm going to affirm uh, that I'm going to be a church worker. Some are just, I want to come to the seminary yeah. and check it out, which Hang is out. at high school. That's yeah. perfect. Have uh, a friend coming along. Exactly. Bring a friend. Bring yeah. a friend. Um, but the point is, is that uh, we're talking about Boccaccio growing it. Yeah. That we're, Oh, um, what, what's the maximum number? Yeah. And I said like between 60 and 70 and then Ben says, okay, let's have 75. But the point is, is, is that right now uh, we have more than double the registrations for Boccaccio that we had this time of the year. Yeah. And we have more uh, registrations for Boccaccio than we had participants last year. Like, and I've changed, anyway, 
so if you're listening and you've been thinking about vocatsu or you've been thinking about a youth in your congregation that you want to send or and tell about it, um, tell them soon. Uh, because like you said, that 35,000 email that you sent out, we get responses from those and we're about to send out more emails inviting people to come to Boccaccio. And so if you're one of our viewers, I'm giving you a few days heads up to register and sign up because yeah. those emails are going to go out next week. And uh, the registration deadline is May 27th, but I don't think that the registration will be It'll it, fill up it's before gonna, it's May It's going to fill up before yeah. May 27th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've been on the fence and you want to come, just just sign up uh, and just come because it's a wonderful week. It won't be a waste of time. It's a beautiful thing. The Concordias all come. You'll be able to hear from their priests and directors. Mike Middendorf is representing Concordia University, uh, Irvine. Nice. And you might not know the name, but he is. Oh, no. He's like I, know a, I know you do. I'm oh, talking about our yeah, listeners. Yeah. He's like When we think about rock star theologians yeah. in our church, oh, Mike man. Middendorf is one. And he asked right. me. It's such a humbling thing. He asked me like what he wanted to what I wanted to present on, it was Romans, Romans. obviously, <laughs> or or something, uh, some archaeological finds he found in Hippo. Mm, nice. And very selfishly, I'm like, well, <laughs> obviously it's Romans, but then I stopped and I have to think about the Boccaccio kids and Hippo I'm, is a, you probably, maybe you've, uh, you're a listener, you've probably heard of it, but that is a great place for Christianity, yep. for lots of things yep. that have come out of Hippo. Augustine. Augustine of Hippo. Yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, my yeah, oldest son's middle namesake. Nice. Um, anyway, and so it's a wonderful program. And again, we talk about that lag goal. So 55 for this year. We're going to set another lag goal for the fall of 2024. Um, and and we're going to continue to increase our lag goals uh, to try to approach the need for the church. Yeah. And it by the time we get there, the need will increase. Yeah. Uh, and so my whole point of talking about vocatio, that's kind of a place where we see um, that's where it, it starts. Yeah. Because it's a lead goal toward the, the lag of the more high school students that we bring on campus. Yep. Hopefully, prayerfully, by the work of the Holy Spirit, working through the word and time with uh, faculty, some of those will will become pastors, yep. deaconesses in the. In the summer of 21, uh, I can firmly remember uh, when first asked, is anybody going to become a pastor? None of those students raised their hands. Mm. Last year, uh, a little over a third raised their hands. Nice. And some of them are repeaters. Some yeah. of them are new. Yeah. And so uh, we'll ask that question yeah. again. And I'm excited yeah. to see the, the hands that will get raised. So, Vocatio, June 24th to July 1st. Uh, so that's kind of like enrollment updates. Yeah, um, that's good. Our enrollment cycle is closed if you're still on the fence about applying closing hurry now yeah because uh, it, it's not like you submit an application and, and you get into the seminar you got to do a lot of work and so right yeah you're getting like to the point where today. if you want to come yeah, 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 yeah you're probably going to get pushed to the fall of 24 which isn't bad but yeah. um yeah uh any more enrollment based updates that you want to give about life no, i think about we're i think we're good i think we should uh i think we should do some ripe for the picking. Yeah, it's always, you know, it's this was the moment. <laughs> this was the moment where, uh, I, right as I was getting ready to do ripe for the picking, you were. <gasps> this, yeah, it is. So the red lights, the red lights on. It's so still on. Yeah, we're we're, we're recording. Um, you did. You wanted to start yesterday, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you do it again because that's right. interesting. Well, I say that interesting. I didn't go outlandish. I think I know the second one, but we'll see. Yeah, I I don't know. The more I've thought about mine, that I don't know that they're that great. But I'll lean uh, into it. I'll, I got yeah. you. All right. So the first one is. Um, right for the picking or leave it on the tree. Cereal without milk as a snack. So dry cereal as a snack. That is 100% leave it on the tree for me. Mm. All right. Um, I don't, you know what? And it's funny. I don't, I don't ever, I'm not going to say I never did it as a kid, but I, I, it wasn't something that I like went to. Um, and I think, not growing up, not when I was young, but eventually they came out with like cereal snack bars, and I I, I see those on the shelves. I, it's never interests me. I love mm. like I love there's I love cereals that aren't good for you. I think yeah. my favorite might be. This is gonna throw people off. It's probably Frosted Flakes. I really enjoy them, and I 
I, it's just sugar, bro. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's, well, there's no taste. Well, what are you missing? Sugar and corn. And, and corn. Ugh. But I also really like a. Don't be a hater. I also <laughs> really like cinnamon toast crunch. Oh it's, yeah, it's like, yeah, I would say it's no, between good. those two, yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, almost no nutritional value, right? It's like a rice mm. something. Exactly. With lots of sugar. And it's cinnamon. not the. It's not the point of cereal, though. It's not to be yeah. good for. When you. I was a kid, Lucky Charms were my absolute okay. favorite, and I could, I could eat them as a snack sure. try um, because you got the marshmallows you got the the sugary puffs puffs whatever um no for me it's it's um it's ripe for the picking the yeah. other day um there is a cereal from aldi's um dark chocolate sea salt granola man it is it's in, it comes in a red bag right. it is so good and i had that as a snack the other night i was like man i'm really enjoying just having some yeah. Dark chocolate granola. I couldn't eat like raisin bran as a snack. Although I had raisin bran this morning. I, I like raisin bran. I don't mind it. I like the uh, one with the clusters in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's a lot more sugar in, yeah. in that. Exactly. <laughs> I stay away from the sugar for the most part. But the, the dark salt, uh, dark chocolate sea salt granola, there's there's a good amount of sugar in it. But it, it's a tasty snack. That's so, fair. All right. right. Yeah, I, what you got? My kids also, but anyway. And then Lucky Charms, they just eat the marshmallows, of course. Of course. What else are they going to do? Um, right for the picking, leave it on the tree, mash the TV show. Mm. Yeah, you know, it was it was on as reruns when I was a kid, a lot. It wasn't out when you were a kid? Bro. As a new production? Come on. No? Oh, I, listen, isn't it? I don't think so. Are you sure? I don't think so. It's not like a late 70s, early 80s show? Ended in seventy. In seventy. Oh, okay. Seventy-three. Eight? Eighty-three. Oh, Eighty-three. Yeah. Ended? See, there we go. So it ended before I was born. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in in nineteen eighty-three, <laughs> if I might have seen, I mean, I was born in seventy-seven, probably. so okay. Um, yeah. I was I was pretty young, for, right? For sure. So uh, I definitely remember it being on. I would always want to switch it to another channel um so yeah i would say it's uh it's leave it on the tree for me right. um i i have come back to it a little bit as an adult and seen a couple of episodes and realized that it for its time culturally it's a really interesting show because it's taking these really horrific experiences that a ton of americans uh went through either either on the battlefield or a family member that did. And it's it's humanizing all those stories, and it's it's trying to bring some humor mm-hmm. uh, into a really dark uh, episode. And it, it is kind of interesting that they took a really real uh, setting and, you know. But, it is a combo, yeah. But, but I, I didn't live through that time. Sure. And um, I, I always found the humor a little, a little weird. Um, so, yeah, not for me. That's fair. Yeah. How about you? Just leave it on the tree. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, old time TV, hmm. for better or worse. Anyway, make you feel old. It's just you know you, of course, movies and TV weren't what they are now when I was a kid, but they were beginning. It was like you know I'm born in '84, so like video games, TV shows, movies. That was kind of late 80s early 90s is when things be- began to be bigger better yeah. all these fresh things. prince of bel-air and everybody that kind of stuff. learned from george lucas and yeah. uh star wars and so you you even i, I don't want to hate on star wars i mean i grew up but with yeah, brady bunch and little house in the prairie and i i i still love those shows yeah. i tried to and failed miserably to get my kids into Little House in the Prairie. My mom I, is a big fan. I just enjoyed it as a yeah. kid. It was it was interesting. I watched probably I've watched probably every every episode of Little House on the Prairie, and I still love it. So like again, shows from the '80s and stuff like that. I, I could probably like go back and watch. But like I, I said that, and now there is one black and white show that I probably still could watch and enjoy. It's probably and it's Andy Griffith. No, Lassie. Oh, Lassie. big Lassie fan. Huh. I love the movie. Flipper? I, Did you ever watch Flipper? I, you know, I, I tried. It just wasn't good. Yeah. It, I okay. liked Flipper as a kid. All right. I've, I've now... I'm Gilligan's Island? I was just about to say, completely contradicting myself. Yeah. I was going to say Gil, Gil, Gilligan's Island. Yeah, that's a good show. Quick aside, there's um the island it was filmed on is in Hawaii. It's called Coconut Island. Mm. And uh, 
there's like a resort when your parents are Marine or other military that you, as you move on, as they, you move to Hawaii, of course, all space is limited. And before you get a house, you live in this resort. We lived there for a long time anyway. And Coconut Island was like right there. Mm. So it was always like, oh, that's where Gilligan's Island was, was filmed. Did you ever go on a three hour tour? Nope. Never even went to the island. Just looked at it from the beach. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, oh, that, yeah, that was, that's only our second one. You know, it's, as an aside, when we have a guest on, and if you're listening, this is how Right for the Pick and Leave It on the Tree goes. Don't just give us a one-liner and say, oh, let's leave it on the tree. And then say nothing. Come, yeah, give us yeah, something. This, on, this right? is content. Right. right. Yes. We went from MASH to Tell us why. To, yeah, we were all over the place. <laughs> we're, we're having fun. Yeah, I love we, this part. Yeah. yeah it's so good. Um, all right. Right for the Pick and or Leave It on the Tree. You, you have a steak in front of you. Okay. And there's a bone in it. All right. And you've eaten, or, or pork chop, right? Steak, beef, or, or pork. Um, and you've eaten, or, or even chicken, frankly, um, something with a bone in it. You've eaten all the meat that you can get off as easily as possible. And then there's those little bits mm -hmm. around the bone. Um, right for the picking or leave it on the tree, do you? pick up the bone and gnaw the bone until you get every last piece of meat off of that bone. Uh, that is a hundred percent right for the picking. Yeah. That's where all the best meat is. Right. So like people who like eat. So this was a, a thing for Dorothy. She grew up and until we got married and she's changed her mind, I believe, or at least she just gets through it. But like when we first got married, like the, the most inexpensive piece of chicken you can get is chicken legs. Yeah. And I'm the youngest of five. And so usually the leg was my piece of chicken. It's the best tasting piece anyway. Right. Uh, long story short, meat with the bone on, bone adds flavor. Yeah. And so the if you take a chicken leg and you have like the little bits on the top and the end, of every I'm eating that cartilage, man. Especially right. if, it's, if it has to be done well. If it's yeah. underdone and it's just chewy and doesn't have yeah. any flavor or anything like that, yeah. leave it. But if it's cooked well, yeah, I'll eat. It'll just be a bone. Yeah. Left. And the, m one of my children understands Jonathan, my little gourmand. Uh, but the same thing with steak, pork chops. I'll, I'll try to if the uh, I'll try to eat the marrow out. Oh, yeah. Exposed. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Exactly. I leave nothing but parts that right. the body can't digest. I'm I figured that that was that was where <laughs> you would be on it. It's totally ripe for the picking for me, too. Yeah. I, man, um, there is nothing better than having a nice bottle of red wine, something Italian, hopefully. All right. And having a steak that was cooked on the grill, just bring it in, and uh, you're at the end of the meal. The kids have left. The nonsense is over. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, I love my kids, but of course. I love that end of the meal where there's still a little bit of wine left, and there's just a little bit of meat on the bone, and you can just kind of gnaw and sip and have a conversation. Mm. That that's the best part of a steak dinner for me. Bring it here, man. I'm a hundred percent with it. Yeah, no. And, and if, uh, as always, I I love the idea of the the. I was gonna say Bordeaux, but that's not Italian. Just goes nope. to show I don't know my wines, man. Anyway, and uh, I have a Barolo. I know exactly where <laughs> that comes from. Uh, you know, again, I've been updating my list, and I was gonna ask you this one, and now it feels kind of lame because I. I know the answer, but I'll, I'll, I've, I've already checked it. So here we go. All right. Right for the pick and leave it on the tree. I'll just go with it. Tabasco. Mm. I'm trying to formulate an interesting answer. Right. <laughs> uh, so that I don't just give you a one-liner. I mean, I think everybody, uh, our, our viewers and listeners know that I don't do spice. And right. we've, we've probably talked about that. Uh, makes me sweat profusely to the point that it's embarrassing and disgusting, and um, I just want to like flee and go, uh, yeah, <laughs> bathe. Um, Tabasco does have an interesting flavor, but it's just too hot for me. Okay. What what I can do, so so Tabasco is leave it on the tree for me. What I can do. Um, is Frank's Red Hot. Okay, and you find With that. a little bit of butter, if it's non-dairy butter, of right. course, because yeah. everybody knows that's my other thing. But I, I do, as if you can cut the, the hot sauce with a little bit of fat and and that tones the heat down a little bit, I, I actually like the taste sure. 
of, uh, and I think I'd probably like the taste of Tabasco because um, I really enjoy vinegar and the smokiness of mm-hmm. it. But uh, Tabasco, straight up, I'll just that's even on the tree for me. It's making me sweat just thinking about it. I'm glistening. Dale's <laughs> going to have to come and hit me with a little powder here. Yeah. <laughs> Tabasco is also leave it on the tree for me. Oh, and so I. I oh, because it's not hot enough. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's like I, I'm not one of these people who has anything to prove. I don't go to like <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings and get hot. I'll get mild because I'm like you. The flavor is what's good. Yeah. But like, if you think about Frank's Red Hot, uh, one of my favorite hot sauces of all time is like Louisiana brand or like even Crystal, which is kind of like the hood brand, mm. but it's. Still very good. So you're but, a serious connoisseur. But of they use hot different sauce. type of peppers. They all use cayenne. Okay. And Tabasco is a different type of chili. Oh, okay. And I I don't like the taste what of kind Tabasco. Of, what Ta- kind of chili is it? It looks red. It's just a Tabasco chili. Oh, it's that's, a Tabasco yeah, chili. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a name brand. That's the no. Kind that's the I think the name brand. I'm pretty sure the name brand yeah. comes from the type of chili. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I could be I could be wrong about that. Now somebody's gonna fact check and. Yeah, leave, a leave comment. it in the yeah, comments. Leave it, let us know. But I'm, but the taste of Tabasco isn't like a normal hot sauce. So for huh. me, like I would, uh, that's then what, maybe I don't even know what Tabasco tastes like. Which I found interesting because like it's not that there's no heat in Tabasco, but I would say Frank's Red Hot also isn't spicy. But I get it from your perspective. Yeah, none of neither one of those two are like heat ah, spicy. But I would say Frank's is a little more heat than Tabasco. But the, and sriracha is is more heat right? yeah because again now you're talking about a different type of chili yeah. yet again yeah. um from a place in the world where my my sister-in-law is from india mm. and the, her normal level of chili in a curry is only normal in india like in all honesty yeah. i don't know if you can see this on the camera but like i am sweating right now sure. and it's it's because i'm thinking about <laughs> all this heat yeah well yeah, so it is leave it on the tree because just because my so when growing up, uh, my dad used Tabasco and it used to always make me frustrated. It's like just get the normal hot sauce, bro. That everybody likes the, the taste of. What is this? What is Tabasco? normal hot sauce? Like Louisiana, what you just Frank's Red okay. Hot. That's what when I think of normal hot sauce, it's the type of hot sauce that you associate with like a buffalo wing. Yeah, a buffalo yeah, sauce. Yeah, yeah that's right. that. Which is usually Frank's Red Hot with butter, right? That's. Typically, yeah. people from Buffalo are rolling over in their graves, but that is true. That is exactly what it is. Anyway, um, well, great. Uh, good episode. Yeah, and we actually have the audio this time, yeah. um, so it'll be good. Uh, and just just a, a quick reminder as we go out, I won't do the whole outro, but again, yeah, the, the whole purpose of this podcast is conception and moving forward, even when we provide series and theological content, that's also to pique the interest of people to – Think about becoming theologians themselves and yeah. becoming pastors, deaconesses, teacher, teachers, because it's not just pastors that we need. We need it all. Yeah, missionaries, uh, right? We have a, a, a big wide world where, again, there's more and more people who need to hear the gospel from a lot of different places who uh, simply haven't been given the opportunity, maybe because of where they live, but also just because of life and, and maybe because nobody's gone yet. And so you could be that person to go and bring the gospel for the first time to a group of people. And that would be incredibly beautiful. And so if you're thinking about it, link to our request for information, as always, is in the description. Uh, sign up for Vocatio. I think we can probably put that in the description as well. Uh, and then if you know somebody in your congregation, think they'd be a good pastor, teacher, deaconess, or anything like that, make sure you tell them. And as always, we'll see you next time under the fig tree.